Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 10, Episode 88. He's Dave Bryan, Alex Kazora, Steelers Depot.com, back here on this Wednesday. We don't usually do uh, three to tr- three shows a week, uh, but we have to make an exception because of everything that happened on Tuesday for Steelers Nation, an equally busy Tuesday as it was Monday, as you wrote on the website yesterday, Dave. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's wild, and, and for them to make a free agent signing this early is is really rare, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and look, you know, we, we, uh, we speculated long enough, and because of the way the season CBA vote and the, the kind of the delays that were associated with that, we kind of knew that all the news was probably going to come in a couple of days there, and mm-hmm. you know, obviously a very busy Monday, and yeah, they followed up with, uh, as I wrote la- late last night, an equally busy uh, busy Tuesday there, so uh, where would you like to begin? I think we're going to start with the, the biggest news of the day, the biggest surprise of the day, the Steelers making a free agent signing, signing fullback Derek Watt, another Watt brother, the middle brother of the three Watts, joining TJ, the youngest of the three, and I am I was really surprised by this move. I mean, of all the places I expected this team to go for its first free agent signing, fullback was probably last on the list. Yeah, my, me as well. Uh, I, I didn't see that one coming in, and, and as you stated, really, you know, of, of all the moves, look, I mean, a lot of this, I think we've done a really, really good job of, of kind of being mm-hmm. uh, out in front of a lot of this and predicting a lot of this. Were there a few minor surprises uh, along the way, kind of the finer detail minor surprises? Yeah, absolutely, and that's going to happen, uh, but uh, yeah, did you want to talk about the one major surprise uh, so far, especially over the course of the last two days, it's them, uh, you know, coming to terms with with uh, fullback Derek Watt on what looks to be a three year. I don't have the the the, uh, the full breakdown yet. Maybe that'll come some point today. But Jeremy Fowler report reports is three years, nine point seven five million dollar deal. Uh, former Los Angeles Charger, uh, obviously played fullback uh, with them. Uh, about I think last season about 13 or 14 snaps lined up as an inline tight end so that's just uh you know that's uh that that to me that you know for people who are thinking oh can he can he come in and give you some tight end snaps I, you know, at his uh, weight, you know, size and weight. No, I, I'm not expecting that. Overall, the cap hits not going to, shouldn't be very uh, taxing on this team if it comes in like I expect it to. But the fact of the matter is, boy, you you know, this is the, this is what you uh, do to get your first one on the board. Look, he's a great kid. Obviously, having another Watt brother uh, on the team isn't going to hurt things from a uh, from a locker room standpoint. He's a fantastic special teams player. Mm-hmm. The Steelers, of course, uh, just uh, lost Tyler Matikavich, uh to uh, uh, you know to free agency to the Buffalo Bills there. So yeah, they needed a they needed a you, you know you can never have too many uh, special teams demons. But uh, you know is there more to this? You know maybe with with Roosevelt Knicks, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe the health of his knee uh, immediately after Watt was signed. Jerry Dulac posted on Twitter, and like, let's face it, Jerry hadn't been the most accurate, <laughs> you know. Lately, but uh, uh, you know he's saying that 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 you know Roosevelt Nix is going to be out the door. So uh, personally, and as I wrote last night, and I'm getting long winded here, but uh, uh, the only way I can see Nix not surviving these next you know couple weeks or at least through training camp is if there is more to it to that need because the way his contract set up Alex you don't save all that much money you know with, with him now obviously if his knees bad and and he just can't pass the physical or whatever yeah I understand that and maybe they maybe they are more concerned about that uh, as well too and I think we'll find out very quickly uh, mm-hmm. over the next week or two whether or not that's the case. However, comma, if if Nix is going to st- if Nix winds up sticking on this roster, you know, for 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 the next you know few weeks here and, and beyond, you really have to wonder why maybe that kind of money to go after a guy like Watt. 
Yeah, I mean, you're right. You can't have enough special teamers, but you can't have too many fullbacks, and usually anything above one is too many. Um, Obviously, for Watt, you're right, there's the fullback component, but I think the the driving reason why he gets signed is for the special teams element. I think he tied Medikevich for, for, I think, the league lead, or at least tied him in special teams tackles last year with 16 each. So you're kind of doing a one-to-one replacement, and it looks like Watt a little bit cheaper than what Medikevich got up in Buffalo by about a million or two. So I think that's the one big motivator for for the move. Um, With Rosie, yeah, I mean, it it really feels like regardless of when they cut him, it feels like he's not going to be part of the 2020 plans, whether that's just health reasons. I have to think they just the availability hasn't been there for him. He's missed time over the last four years. He's had some some relatively serious, I think, knee injuries that that have kept him sidelined. And and obviously the lack of a fullback really hindered this offense last year. And Art Rooney's mandate was fix the run game. And this is one element of it. It's not going to fix it completely, obviously, but it is going to be one component of it. I will put on my tinfoil hat for just one second. And this is probably out of my Rosie Nicks fandom, because everyone knows I, I, I love the guy. He's just a throwback dude that could play in any era. Um, in 2015, when Nicks made the team, they carried two fullbacks, I think, for the entire season, him and Will Johnson. I mean, Will Johnson lost a lot of playing time at that point, but they did have two fullbacks on the roster. Now, they were both cheap options, and I think that's probably one reason why they did it, and I really can't see them carrying two fullbacks this year. But I'm going to hold on to that hope for 2015 when Nicks made their roster with Will Johnson for one season. Let me let me buckle, let me buckle that uh, tenfold chin strap for you. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, and, and tighten it up a little bit for you. All you know, right. with this with this new CBA, Alex, uh, you can have two more extra game day uh, mm-hmm. uh, players as well, too. Now, one of them, I think, has to be uh, uh, an offensive lineman. I guess what they're going to do is almost like the third quarterback role right. uh, year, years ago. I think you're probably going to have to designate your designated offensive lineman, <laughs> uh, you know, as part of the uh, part of the inactive list that you turn. It'd be interesting to see how they do that. Uh, but, you know, what what could you use the other the the, the, you know, the other game day, you know, uh, active spot for, you know, a it, team, it, right? it, it wouldn't make sense that you could potentially use it for a special teams uh, spot. And look, I make no mistake about it. This team, uh, even though Roosevelt Knicks wasn't going to be used probably a ton mm-hmm. uh, in the backfield as a fullback last year. He was barely used at all because he only played, what, three or four games because of that knee injury, you know. Mm-hmm. And obviously playing in the first game against Miami, I don't even think, I mean, not uh, not Miami, New England, uh, he didn't even see any offensive snaps in that game, I think, due to, I think right. he played through a knee injury uh, in that game, the special team snaps there. So eliminate that. And, you know, as I pointed out a few times, I think when he did play later on uh, in the season, he wasn't the same self because of that knee, right, you know. Right. Uh, I didn't find his play to be Roosevelt Knicks-like. Uh, uh, but but you know that was an observation, I, and I don't think it's it's so much him declining as a player as it was health related there. So uh, all right, cinch that bad boy up on on, on your head there because <laughs> if he does survive these next couple of weeks, you know, and and Jerry Dulac are already out there saying that they're going to cut him, but if he does survive. Maybe, just maybe, and if he stays healthy, you know, the rest of the way out, maybe they do carry two again. And Mm -hmm. that way they they don't get into a game and go, oh, man, we got to alter the run game a little bit here because or, 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 you know, some plans because we don't have a fullback. So uh, I, 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 you know, you know me, you don't have to twist my arm to pull out the (laughs) tinfoil hat there, but uh I you know we'll see how quickly we get if we get an answer on Roosevelt Knicks there. Now the guy once again like you said and and, and as I pointed out on Twitter right after he said heck of a special teams player and what mm-hmm. and not a bad fullback at all either to be right. quite honest with you. You know? Yeah. But yep. the fact is, how many snaps, you know, I, and yeah, there's the mandate to help the running game and all. But even so, you're not you would think that you're not going to have any fullback on the field for 30 snaps a game, you know? No, but some, I mean, obviously the lack of a fullback did hurt the run game last sure. year. I think there's no no denying that. So I'm just saying it's, I think it's an element of it. And, and yeah, obviously keeping two fullbacks, I think the odds are slim. But if it did happen, it would be like the 73rd craziest thing that's happened in the world today. So you know what? At this point, I'm willing to roll the dice uh, with everything going on. But but yeah, I mean, it, again, this is a special team focus move. This would be like re-upping Tyler Medikevich, essentially. And it gives you something a, a little bit on offense, too, to try to strengthen the run game. So a surprising signing, but being a Watt doesn't hurt. Um, I'm sure that helped entice him to come to Pittsburgh. And with the way the Bill O'Brien's giving away players. I'm all for trying to get JJ and complete the, the trifecta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the trilogy. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. At least uh, <laughs> I, I'd be will, will, willing to bet against there. And 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 once again, uh, circling back. I mean, you don't you don't see Watt doing much a, a, as an inline tight end, right? 
No, I mean they would be like calling Jalen Samuels an inline tight end, basically. <laughs> uh, maybe Pe- people do that. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, wrongly. I mean, maybe a couple of snaps where he gets motioned out, but he's going to be primarily a fullback, and again, and they do need it. But it it hurts my heart to see to see Nick because he's still a good player. It's just the health hasn't been there. And you're right, maybe this knee injury's been that serious. Obviously, it was pretty serious for him to basically lose the entire 2019 season. But when he's out there, he's a, he's a really good player, uh, a hard edge guy, but. This might be end of the line for Rosie Nixon. If they do cut him now, I mean, you're right, it wouldn't save much money, but they barely save money cutting Johnny Holton. So maybe they do just move on from there. Right, but you would think that it would be because so many things can happen during an offseason. If he's sure. healthy, I mean, to me, he's the last person that you'd want to cut if healthy to save right. 400000 or whatever it is in cap space. I agree. If he's healthy, I'm carrying him to camp, absolutely. But uh, we'll find out pretty soon. We'll find out quick. I mean, if he's on this roster, you know, uh, I, I guess we could draw the line in the sand at about, you know, the the, the day, you know, a couple of days after the draft would probably be appropriate. You mm-hmm. know, if he's on the roster uh, at that point, then then one has to think he's going to make it to camp at that point. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find out fairly soon. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we had a bunch of – that was the one outside for each that came in. A lot of guys re-upped, and we were waiting on those RFAs because they had to be tendered by 4 p.m. Wednesday today, and they all came in. And, and thankfully, uh, I was really happy to see that. Uh, Mike Hilton, Matt Filer both uh, tendered at the second-round level. That's going to cost, what, $3.2 million before roster displacement for those guys. Uh, again, really outside of Watt, yesterday nothing surprised me, and we, all along we expected Hilton and Fowler to get the second round ten. Yeah, I, I don't see why there were some people out there thinking that they were going to be able to get away with giving these guys low uh, uh, right of first refusal, you know, tenders with these guys mm-hmm. because them being a uh, former former uh, 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 undrafted free agents, obviously there's no round to attach to to them. So if you would have re- if you would have tendered either one of these guys at uh, just the right to first refusal level <laughs> probably both of them are gone yep. because there's there's uh to other teams can sign them to uh, uh to offer sheets and and they can make them you know they could kind of poison pill it if you will to some degree uh, do the deals in a fashion that the Steelers usually don't like to to do or match and not have to give up any compensation in the process so i th- i believe and, and you and i called it right from the get-go with this uh second round tenders were in order for both these players and that is indeed what happened uh uh, no team now is going to go out there and sign either one of these guys to offer sheets and give up a second round pick uh, in the process. I think effectively uh, this team used up, what did I write, five point something million dollars effectively in cap space after roster displacement by tendering both these guys. Yeah, so they're both going to be here for 2020. And uh, obviously, as we will talk about, you know, the loss of BJ Finney in a second, Ron Foster retiring, you could not lose Matt Filer. He is probably your favorite right now to be uh, the Steelers' starting left guard. Don't want to put that in, in, in pen, but that is probably the favorite. And then Hilton, I think, one of the best nickel corners in the game, certainly one of the best against the run. So a no brainer decision there. It will be interesting to see how this team proceeds going forward with the future of the slot position with Hilton and Cam Sutton going into the final year of their deals in 2020. Uh, absolutely, and uh, the exact number on the effective cap space used for the Steelers on the second round tendering of Hilton and Viler is five point two nine eight million. So uh, a lot of people that that means roster displacement uh, for those listening there. You know, once a guy goes into the uh, top fifty one, he's obviously replacing somebody at the bottom of the of the fifty one. So right now, the bottom um, bottom of the year salaries in the rule of fifty one for the Steelers are minimum base salaries at six hundred ten thousand. So you take the the cap hit both those players are scheduled to make and you subtract 610,000 from it and then that's what you get uh, the effective cap space used for uh, for a player and, and and you see that that's not used enough uh, in, you know out there in, in 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 you know by the general media and all and I really wish wish it would be because people get under the impression that it's a slam dunk you you used up x amount of cap space Right, and and for a team like Pittsburgh, it really matters because obviously every <laughs> yeah. penny counts uh, right now for this team. So absolutely on that, Dave. Uh, the other uh, RFA that, that was uh, not tendered but signed a deal, Zach Banner, uh, per a uh, source tells Steelers Depot, a one-year, one point seven five million dollar deal. So again, not the tender, but he will be sticking around for 2020. And again, if Filer kicks the left guard like we're assuming as of the moment, then. 
he and Banner and and, and Chukwu Makorfor would battle it out for the starting right tackle spot. Well, yeah, it looks like it looks like that uh, that that tweet by Banner was was uh, foretelling, right? You know, he mm-hmm. did not receive uh, uh, a restricted tender from the team and uh, had to work out a, a a deal with the team there. So uh, they did not value him, kind of kind of as I speculated uh, uh, at at. at you know, over a two million dollar level, which would have been an original round tender cost for him. Uh, he obviously wanted to stay in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think this is a good deal for both sides, really, because a it's a one year deal for him. Uh, he's a millionaire, well over a million millionaire now at, at this point with this deal. Uh, gives him a chance to prove uh, prove his prove his worth here one more season. Uh, the Steelers don't lose any depth in the process here. So uh, uh, and once again, the effective cap space on this one is is something around lines of like 1.14 million or something like that so uh, i like it all the way around and i was not surprised one bit uh by the announcement that he just signed a one-year deal on that yeah again with the loss of, of foster and finney you do not want to go ahead and lose banner too and really crippled your depth and, and and certainly provide good competition for a core four because a core four should not be walking into a starting spot next year he needs to be tested he needs to be pushed can't be assured of anything because 2019 was not a good year for a core four i would say he was one of the biggest disappointments on the entire roster so happy that banner reporting eligible in 2020 uh, elsewhere and dave you got this one right on the head with cam Canada, uh, another restricted free agent but we you you had figured that they weren't going to tender him because it just would be too costly on a one-year deal so instead he does a two-year deal to spread out that cap hit a little bit cheaper as well so cam Canada back to, to long snap in 2020 exactly like i thought and exactly how they have done in the past several years ago with long snappers and and players kind of in a similar situation as cameron Canada there uh i went right up I went up against it. I kind of thought they would have got it done earlier, you know, uh, with him. But obviously, uh, you'll need to need to take care of some other things there, and probably need to wait on see what happened with the CBA so they could get this thing structured uh, the way that they did. But uh, absolutely, I, we already have the details on that one uh, as well. It's a two-year deal. It totals out at two point four two five million dollars total, and it includes a signing bonus of just four hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Base salaries are the minimum in in two thousand twenty, which is nine hundred ten thousand, and a little over a million in 2021 his cap charges for 2021 is uh, 1.135 million and for 2021 1.29 million uh, respectively the Steelers effectively lose uh, used just 525,000 in 2020 salary cap space to re-sign Kent Canada there now he's under contract for two years he's also very cuttable should you need uh, need to go that route as well, too. So kudos to them, and that's another one, non-surprise for us. Yep, and so those are all the RFAs taken care of. Well, I guess Jordan Dangerfield was will officially not be tendered by, by 4 p.m., but he may come back on a, on a one- or two-year deal for, for much cheaper than the tender. Uh, I apologize if you're hearing sound. They're <laughs> yeah. on the roof for some reason at 11 a.m. Uh, I don't know what uh, they're doing out there, but I apologize for that. I'll try to meet my mic when you talk, Dave, and, uh, it, so you can hear. It sounds like somebody beating the lid of your, tra- your trash can or something. <laughs> yeah, the Houston Astros are actually over ah. right now. I got Altuve and Bregman right now. We're uh, throwing some change-ups. Um, <laughs> anyway, so back hey, to Hey, while we're at it, what was mm-hmm. – I missed the significance of that uh, video you posted the other – was it because it sat, because the bang so – was that supposed to symbolize like morse code or something in the background in that in that video of uh the the video game that you posted of the astros the other day yeah i edited in trash count banging sounds on that change up that because they hit a single off of that and it just made me laugh you added that in there or what yeah, yeah, I, I found a video of the Astros in MLB 20, and then I edited in sounds of a trash can banging before the pitch. Oh, okay, the pitch. okay, yeah, so okay. I, 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 little... I, I was a little slow there, so I... <laughs> I don't think I was the first to do that, so I think people uh, beat me to the punch. But anyway, uh, so yeah, if you hear that, I apologize for, for the banging in the background. Uh, back to Pittsburgh. Ryan Chazier, uh replaced on the uh, reserve retired list. I do want to clarify, and I I don't think anyone knows exactly what's going on with this, but I don't believe Shazier is officially retiring. I know obviously being on the reserve retired list might give that indication, but I think this just, as, as Colbert said, a procedural move to be able to sure, in, ensure he stays with the team. And so uh, he's going to be on the reserve retired list. He could obviously unretire if he ever you know wanted to, if the doctors were able to clear him. So this is not an official retirement from Shazier, but this is the direction the Steelers are taking. Yeah, and I still stand by the fact that I'm hearing some echo now somewhere in there. Uh, I still stand by the fact that his contract was set to toll. 
Okay, because that they, it makes sense the procedural move uh, this way to do uh, to to do that. I, I checked with Joe Corey yesterday as well too, and he says this move uh, also, in his opinion, uh, screams that the contract was set to toll again, and also it kind of matches up with the NFLPA going into this week, uh, matching up the number of players supposedly under contract with the Steelers uh, uh, to to open up the you know, or going into this week there at, at 63 in total there. So uh, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's just a final minutia that probably nobody cares about, but it, but it's stuff that, that, that makes a difference to me. And especially, look, I mean, if, it, if, if, he, if the contract was counting uh, as tolling uh, on the book still and they did place him on the res- uh, reserve retired list, that should net a $300,000 cap savings that way as well, too. And I think we'll be able to find that real, uh, real quick when the uh, NFLPA finally catches up on their side uh, 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 with the salary cap count here. Uh, the, main, it, the main point here is Ryan Shazier is not going to play. Uh, uh, right now, uh, he is uh, on 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 the reserve retired list. Now, here's the thing uh, that also plays into this that makes me think that the contract would have told is they own his rights right now uh, for him retiring like this. So, in other words, if he was to unretire at any point, the contract would toll and pick up where it left off at. In, in that fashion there. So there would be no no need, no, no re-signing, no need to re-sign him or anything along those lines there. It's almost like right now he's frozen in time. And, and effectively, it's just like uh, Ramon Foster because Ramon Foster had one more year left on his contract. Mm-hmm. So right. if, if, if we got six weeks or, or a year from now or whatnot, Ramon Foster says, you know what, I want to come back and play. Uh, well, then that final year that that that, that uh, Foster owed the Steelers would toll and it would pick up from, from where it left off there. So uh, it is procedural, but as usual, I like to go way down, <laughs> dig, dig deeper, f- further than procedural. But uh, I think the big thing is, is you and I talked uh, uh, on Monday. We're going to find out real quick what's going to happen with Ryan Shazier. And lo and behold, we didn't even have to wait 24. Four hours. Right. I, I, this is going to be a really in the weeds question, but is there any sort of pension benefit or anything from being on reserve retired? Is I mean, I that, that's a, that's that that's works? that's beyond my pay grade. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Right now, especially with this new CBA. Write right. that down. Remind me next time we have Joe Corey on. Uh, that may be one of the numerous questions I think to ask him, and maybe maybe once things slow down here after the start of the new league year, it'd be a perfect time to have Joe Corey on and kind mm-hmm. of go over some of some of those things like like that. So I, I think I know the answer to it, but I don't want to say it uh, because I fear that you know, I might get it wrong. So okay. uh, uh, write that down and let uh, add that to the list of things that we ask Joe Corey about next time he, t- time he's on. Okay, we'll do. But I assume that Chase will still be with the team in uh, in the coaching, scouting capacity he's been in since his injury, and um, and and so that it's just great for the team to be able to to have him around to, to value his input, and and certainly for him to stay active in the organization. Absolutely. Last bit of news, Dave. Steelers losing their third free agent in the last 48 hours, essentially. B.J. Finney goes to Seattle on a two-year, $8 million deal. I don't mean to toot our horn too much, Dave, but I think on yesterday's show, we were basically talking about Finney going for about $4 million per year, and that's about what he went for in Seattle. Again, two years, $8 million. Could Pittsburgh have done that? Certainly, and, and they clearly didn't value Finney as much as I think we thought maybe at the start of 2019, and so now he's a Seattle Seahawk. Yeah, I think the thing, and we we yeah we we nailed that uh, uh, almost down to the penny there. But the the the, the thing is, I think it's kind of obvious now that they just didn't value him, uh, maybe as a you know starter quality, you know potential, uh, you know then then obviously maybe you know other teams potentially would. Uh, uh, he is kind of that borderline. Uh, backup starter player, and you know, I, I really, really think when you look back to last season now, and you look at him getting sat down for that game uh, mm-hmm. against the Rams there in favor of Matt, so Matt Fodder could shift over. I think that's really, really telling yeah. uh, at, at this point. And you know, there was a report I think later last night uh, by Jeremy Fowler saying the Steelers uh, really both sides kind of had intentions maybe to re-sign him. They just couldn't get. Uh, you know, the Steelers just probably couldn't come close to what the Seahawks uh, were offering there, uh, offering Finney. Uh, the early details on the Finney contract, uh, the base value, $8 million, four and a half 
$1.5 million guaranteed, a $2 million signing bonus, and his salary's uh, uh, $2.5 million in 2020, fully guaranteed as well, too. He wasn't going to get that fully guaranteed. He wasn't going. He probably wasn't going to get the full $4.5 million guaranteed uh, by the Steelers there. And also, there, it looks like there's some per-game active incentives uh, in, in playtime incentives, and the Steelers really kind of generally stay away from 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 incentive uh, and and playtime base escalators uh, like what is uh, evidently in the contract with the Seahawks there. So you know could could the Steelers have, have, have probably come come close to that? Maybe you know three point seven five million a year uh, possibly, but I don't think they were gonna if if they did they probably weren't going to guarantee as much of the, uh, anything other than the signing bonus uh, in this case and. You know, uh, I think Finney and and who knows, you know, Finney would probably still be in the battle for 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 a starting job, uh, potentially depending on what happened in the draft. Anyway, be interesting to see if he winds up starting in Seattle. You know, at mm-hmm. this point, I, I think they're having a little bit. You know, I think they're up, uh, you know, not not obviously up against the cap like the Steelers are, but I think they've got, you know, some 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 uh, some cap things that they're going to go through uh, the rest of this off season as well too, though. But uh, is it a huge surprise that Finney is not resigning with the Steelers? No. Uh, and I think we've kind of both kind of uh, would agree on that going back most of the offseason there. Yeah, I think we had said all along that we expected, you know, Finney to be gone. It was very likely that he was going to be headed somewhere else. I thought he might get again, I I'm pretty accurate with the money. I thought maybe it would get a little bit more and the Steelers not even coming to, to that. You know, it's just that they really weren't going to put a, a much of a, a value on him in terms of what they were offering. But regardless, Finney is gone, and that creates a really big need along the interior offensive line for the Steelers right now because there is no backup center. Right now, there's really no you know starting left guard. Again, Filer could, probably will shift. We don't know that for sure. Bouchette yesterday made a pass at a core for moving to left guard. I don't know if he was just you know, old man yelling at the lawn, throwing stuff out there, but that's something I guess to consider as well. But but certainly into your offensive line is one of the top needs for the Steelers right now. Yeah, and a few people have asked me, what do you think about a core for kicking over or kicking inside a left guard? I mean, am I going to say slam dunk is not going to happen? Uh, I, I can't say that, but I mean, people ask me what I think about it. Wh- what do we have to go on? <laughs> and why would it happen when Filer could kick inside and it's more suitable there? Right. I mean, we don't have anything. I, I don't believe at Western Michigan we got any tape of him playing inside, right? All right. I, I think he was a tackle his whole his whole life. And he's been groomed to be a tackle. So why kick him to left car whenever he can start a right tackle if he move Filer inside where right. he, he can be a guard? And really, uh, t- uh, you know, I heck, I think probably a better chance of Banner kicking inside than maybe yeah. a four four, you know. Right. And and that and, and obviously, I, I don't think that's going to happen there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see. You know, for, I, I I've learned to not speak in absolutes when it comes to something like that. But I I'll put it to you this way, and you probably agree w- with me. We'll be kind of surprised if that happens with uh, with a core four. Look, I, I have no problem sometimes at thinking maybe sometimes some tackles can keep can, can kick inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 to guard, because look, I mean, I you know, I thought I thought maybe that should have pro- potentially, you know, before before uh, sent off in you know, to Tampa for for a deal. I thought maybe that could potentially happen with Gerald Hawkins there. It obviously never did, but Hawkins had a, a little bit more athletic, you know, kind of uh, guard profile. I think that a core four. Mm-hmm. Uh, does and if, if if Hawkins didn't get moved, it, it it really is kind of you know I understand people throwing it out there, but once again it goes back to what you and I have said about Filer this whole time here. He got kicked. He was the guy that got kicked inside against uh, uh, against the Rams last season. Also, we actually have preseason tape on him playing some guard uh, as well too. Now, could the Steelers get into the draft here uh, and, and, and draft a, a, a center slash guard, and that guy end up winning the position? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's possible. It's not unthinkable. Uh, sure. Could the Steelers go out there right now and go get them? I mean, you got your checker flag ready, right? Because uh, <laughs> I mean, the, this the stars are lining up for a Max Garcia signing uh, at, at this point. And uh, look, we don't know. I mean, he says his knee's okay, but at least it gives you a body to come in uh, uh, to kind of quasi fix the hole. You still don't have to ignore the position uh, in, in the draft as well, too. So I think this will go either one of three ways here. I think it's either going to be Filer is going to kick inside to be your left guard. You either get a free agent off the street uh, on the cheap, i.e. maybe Max Garcia, 
or you get a kid in the draft that ends up uh, wowing you right from the start and in, in, in winning a job. Uh, those, those are really the three options there, and I'm not going to be surprised if that missing option right now or the two missing options right now in the draft pick and a guy, i.e., your, 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 your suggestion of Garcia, winds up uh, being the case here with you know, by the time the draft is done with. I agree. Setting aside who's going to start a left guard, uh, obviously depth is just an issue regardless whether it be Fowler or Corfer or whatever. So I think you have to attack it twofold. I don't think you can do it just through free agency. I don't think you can do it just through the draft. I think you got to sign a low-level veteran that has experience, can provide that kind of element of competition, versatility. Max Garcia, Evan Bain from Miami are the two top names on my list right now. And then go through the draft and find someone, too, that can play center or guard, whether you're talking Matt Hennessy from Temple, Tyler Baidez from, from Wisconsin, Lloyd Cushenberry III from LSU, uh, Cesar Ruiz from, from Michigan are all kind of the top names on that list. So I don't my think mock can... draft looking real good now. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Um, so I think you got to do both because you want to have competition. You don't want to get a sure spot. It's like you can't have a rookie coming in being guaranteed to being that starting swing man right away. You want to be able to push him, have different options, and obviously protect yourself against injuries that inevitably are going to happen. So I think it would be very prudent for this team to address offensive line depth, a big need, both in free agency and through the draft. True or false, uh, within, the la- within the next uh, 14 days, there will be a, a center-capable player outside free agent signed to this team true i'll be very surprised if there isn't i'm with you true for me as well too write it down what about any other free agency spot let's look at nose tackle being a need and and again do you want to bank on the draft providing the answers there or do you want to bank on the in-house options providing the answers there if i'm pittsburgh i'm looking at the trenches for the rest of free agency i'm trying to get a, 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 an interior offensive lineman, a nose tackle, and if you can swing it, I'd love to get a really low-level safety as well. I agree. You're not going to get any argument out of me on 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 any of that, you know. And and you know maybe I don't know, maybe an uh, uh, end of the list, uh, an inside linebacker type, maybe or, mm-hmm. or 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 maybe an edge rusher or something. But uh, once again, all these are going to be low-level, uh, low-dollar signings. Heck. Uh, Derek Watt might be the most expensive of the, yeah. bu- uh, of the bunch by the time uh, the smoke smoke clears at this point. But it's everything we've kind of mapped out till now. Just now we have kind of more confirmation that 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 you know it's an imperative to get a center type player at this point. Uh, and if you can play guard, fantastic. Uh, and then you know, I, I, look, we knew we we knew the team was going to lose uh, a Hargrave. Uh, it would be nice to have a guy, maybe a little bit more than the minimum, uh, come in that you know could 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 play the nose tackle uh, position in the base defense in a pinch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some of those names I'm looking at: Ashawn Robinson from Detroit, Andrew Billings from Cincinnati, whose market might be a little too hot, but. You know, we'll see. Certainly someone the Steelers will probably be interested in. In Al Woods, a reunion ex-Steeler who's over in Seattle. And then at safety, I'm looking at guys like probably Deion Bush. Is, I think is the top name on my list in terms of the most realistic. Should be super cheap. Jeff Heath, by the way, he was on my list. Went to Oakland on a two-year, $8 billion deal. I was kind of bummed about that because I would have paid Jeff Heath two years, $8 million as a as a really strong number three safety. I wonder where Carl Joseph's going to come in at. Yeah, I think. It's, it's so gotta hard be to more, judge him. It's got to be above Jeff Heath, all right? It's got to be above Four million man, per year. I, yeah, that safety position, man. That's 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 interesting. That the tight end position. <laughs> Some yeah, what about, what about Vanette? What's going on with Nick Vanette right yeah, now? Yeah, what, what look, what are Raiders going to do with our buddy Foster Moreau now? They're going to have Jason Witten steal snaps away. Uh, and and, and who who was the other athletic uh, tight end over there? Uh, yeah, and who was the other backup that that I tweeted about the other day? Uh, uh, the other nope. carrier. Oh, D- Derek Carey? Right? Yeah, Derek Carey. There, you know, they're probably not going to be room for him either. Now, look, right. is he is he a prime tight end? I like his blocking. I I would welcome him on a minimum salary benefit deal uh, to come in and compete for a roster spot now. But uh, kind of curious. Not that I think it's going to end up, uh, uh, you know, the Steelers playing in in into in any of that uh, over there. But uh, just kind of curious. They go out there and sign a guy like Jason Witt when they have Foster Moreau mm-hmm. and Waller already there. You know. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we'll keep you guys posted on that. If if these two days have been any indication, the Steelers are are not done. It's going to be busy. I mean, it it, it should slow down a little bit because those were the big things. They kind of now have their house in order uh i think there's been reports of a cam hayward extension being very close to being done maybe another restructure or two happening so still some internal things to take care of but th- this has been the biggest wave of information of, of them getting them out ha- their house in order and getting cap compliant yeah this is uh, uh the the most 
the, the more predictive stuff that we the speculating about the speculating about mm-hmm. the speculating that that we've done I think is pretty much in the past right now uh, as I wrote in kind of in that recap article late last night you know what's on tap for today well I mean my, might we learn about another uh, uh, restructure or two I it's it's possible uh, to hear I, here's the thing that interview that was conducted with Art Rooney II I think he's behind the news cycle <laughs> oh really <laughs> because he said we got a few more things to do to get under the cap when there's already oh. the restructures. Uh, I don't, in other words, I don't think he's 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 up on what's being reported out there uh, out ahead of him. So technically, yeah, were, were the Steelers when when Rooney uh, spoke to Bob Labriola and others uh, technically over the cap at the time? Yeah, probably so because probably those restructures mm-hmm. hadn't been filed yet. You know, yeah. uh, how how many more restructures will they do? I, it all depends on how much they deem they need in cap space, and that's kind of an impossible uh, question to answer. But the candidates are obviously, I think, Marquise Pouncey, uh, David DeCastro, and Stefan Tuitt, and probably in that order uh, that you would probably do them as well too. So. Uh, I don't know. Here we are. Usually all those restructures leak out fairly quick here. So I think by the end of today, we should know what what uh, uh, initial restructures you know have been done. And, and right now, obviously, I think the number is at five. And I don't think we hit on. Did we hit on this on on, on the show? The other uh, was a Roethlisberger. Yeah, we hit on yeah, Roethlisberger and, and Stephen Nelson getting those contracts mm-hmm. restructured. I think yesterday yep. during the show there. So uh, uh, where are they on cap space right now? It's kind of hard to. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to provide as best a snapshot as I can throughout the day on Twitter, maybe uh, and, and maybe a recap later on tonight, but not knowing exactly where Watt's contract comes in at um, makes it kind of hard. At least we do have the candidate uh, uh, numbers right now. Once again, like I said, that only used up like, what, 500,000 uh, in, in effective cap space. I'm kind of betting that uh, Watt uh, Watt's deal is only going to end up using something along the lines of like 1.6 or maybe 1.7, 1.8 million dollars in cap space, something like that. Because I I just can't imagine his first year cap hit being more than three million, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, usually that first year cap hit's lower. I mean, I know that we're waiting on so much information with restructures and the Watt deal and all that. If you could ballpark where this team is at, is it like six, seven, eight million in cap space right now? Is that roughly accurate? Oh, uh, hold on here. Let's see. They had because uh, they were about at what fifteen prior 15. to the tenders. Fifteen point two or something like fifteen point two, and then you had the tenders eating up like what did I say five point nine on that? So that takes mm-hmm. you a, a little less than ten. Uh, what did I say? Let's 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 say uh, combined uh, Canada and or, or let's see uh, Canada Banner. We'll eat up, let's say another million, uh, another million, right? Between uh, the two. Well, what did I, I well, said, one point seven five. Okay, another two million dollars uh, eaten up between Canada and Banner in cap space, so that puts us around eight, right? Okay. Okay. And then what? I mean, another million and a half, maybe a million two. and a half or more, you know? So yeah, you're back down in the. Loosely five to seven million. Is that safe? Yeah, it's called six. Split the difference there. So you're about at six with it, you know. And Hayward will free up three million. I know we don't know when that's going to get done, but that yeah, would be and thing. it all depends on obviously average yearly value, sure. cash flow, so many factors in there. But three to four million dollars may be saved or somewhere around there if they get him done. Uh, uh, I, go ahead. Are these numbers assuming full restructures with all these guys? Those, that, and that is. That's another thing okay. we don't know for yeah. sure. This is assuming, and you know what they say about, uh, you know, in the old Bad, <laughs> bad News Bears movie, you know, if you mm-hmm. assume you make an ass out of you or in me, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we, you know, I had to check the, I haven't checked the NFLPA site this morning to, to, to see if, my, if the full, it, it would make sense if you're going to do restructures on these guys to do the full amounts. You know, for all five? Because I think all five doing full restructures would be a little bit of a surprise. Well, if they do, Maybe. then you've got a lot less than the six million right. we just talked about. Yeah, yeah. So they could be. I mean, it's hard again. We don't know. We're we'll waiting on the numbers. I know people have been asking me. I'm sure they've been bugging the heck out of you with what these numbers are. But let's just call it about five to six million in cap space right now with the ability to create a little bit more if need be. And that's a real 
real-time snapshot right now. So, in other words, if something happens immediately after this podcast or another restructure comes out, it's obviously going to, or somebody signed, you know, mm-hmm. try it, as we said to time and time again. Although I try my best to do it, and I think I like, I like to think that I do it better than anybody else. Tracking this, tracking the cap in real time is, is, is hard thing to do there. So yep. uh, that's about where we got them at right now after five restructures, uh, the, the signing of uh, Watt, uh, uh, the re-signing of Banner Canada, the tendering of Hilton and uh, Filer, uh, the tagging of Dupree. What am I missing? Uh, did you get Canada and all yeah, Canada and Banner re-signing the yeah, the Watt. The, uh, the Watt uh, signing as well. So anything that's happened up until uh, the time of this you uh, us recording this podcast, I sort of got us at about a five to seven million dollar uh, under the cap range right now. So right. that do, that doesn't leave you know obviously that doesn't leave a lot uh, of space to work with. But uh, once again, going back to something I said at the top of this show, remember that if you sign let's let you know let's say you sign a guy. Uh, and his and his his first year cap hit is let's say 1.61 million dollars. Well, you're only used up a million dollars in cap space because of the bottom end of the roster guy is making 610 thousand there. So mm-hmm. that's a very important thing to think about when 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 moves happen, either coming or going, the effect of cap space. Yeah, the the roster displacement I know is is definitely a, a, as you said earlier a phrase and an element that is always overlooked in these deals, but can play a big role, especially for teams like Pittsburgh that are very close to to the cap. One other one other note that I've yet to write up yet: the Steelers did receive a team adjustment credit uh, for their 2020 salary cap number of ninety two thousand two hundred thirty five dollars. <laughs> so dollar bills, y'all dollar bills. <laughs> Making it rain on the south side. All right, Dave, that was everything. I wanted to cover today anything else you want to add before we close out the show uh did we get everything yep i think that was everything and uh we'll be back on friday for for our full show we just want to have a short show today to kind of go over so much because there was so much happening and by friday who knows what's going to happen by then so i wanted to kind of touch uh touch base on all the moves that happened on tuesday all right, happy uh, happy Wednesday, Alex. And uh, in the meantime, we'll get to more. We'll get to some email questions on the Friday show. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Steelers Depot. Follow Alex Kazora on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show the Terrible Podcast at gmail dot com. If you like what we do and you think we do it well and you think we deserve it, uh, you can donate. Uh, go to Steelers Depot dot com and hit the PayPal button up right in the navigational bar to uh, uh, to donate. Thank you for everyone who does and continues to uh, donate. We got a lot. A lot of people that have kind of um, uh, um, a monthly monthly donation set up. We certainly do appreciate uh, you fine contributors a- a- as well, and, and really all of our listeners overall. Uh, also, if you if you would like to. Uh, get an ad-free version of the site for $25 for one calendar year. You can do so. Go to SteelersDepot.com, hit the ad-free button up right navigational bar. That'll take you uh, to a sign-up page and uh, allows you to pay $25 via PayPal for uh, a, a, a year subscription, if you will, for a non uh, ad or for an ad-free version of SteelersDepot.com. So until Friday, as always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast with Dave and Alex. <laughs>